shows the data that we've been gathering in Excel. So the first tab in this file, and you can download this file from our website, is called Video 6 Example Data. And in column A, we've got date. And in yellow, I make note of the gap in the dates because in all cases, you're not going to be able to make your QC checks at exactly the same one week intervals. For example, you're going to have vacations, holidays, and weekends. And you can see that gap is in yellow in the chart. And you want to make sure that you always use an XY scatter chart so that your data is plotted exactly as it is and not just one by one sequential even if there's a big gap. So if you use an XY scatter chart you can be confident that your chart won't misrepresent your data. In column B we've got the data from temperature probe A. In column C we've got the data from temperature probe B. Then we've got the average and if you click in the cell and then click up here in the formula bar Excel puts the arguments for the function in color so that you can see what cells it's using in its calculation and then I click escape to get out of that and I click on column E which is where relative percent difference is calculated and all that is is the difference between the two divided by the average and then in column F, column F is just equal to whatever is right next to it in column E but I have formatted it as a percentage and the easiest way to format data you, if you have an entire column you can right click the column and format cells and then set it up to format the data however you want it. So we're going to select percentage. Now it doesn't make sense in this case to use two decimal places so I'm going to make it zero decimal places and then you could see your results in terms of a percent which is easier to visualize. So this chart shows your data with the date along the x-axis so that's why this is called a control chart because you're looking at how well your system is in control at different times and then you've got the data for temperature probe A in red this data looks like there really isn't a consistent bias like at some points they're equal to one another so the first QC check and the last QC check both temperature probes read exactly the same and then you've got in general it looks like maybe um, probe A is higher but then they switch here so I would say it's inconclusive as to whether these temperature probes have a bias or not I would continue to gather data and I'd be really really careful about my ice water bath maybe something was happening here in the middle where the temperature probe A maybe was not next to an ice cube maybe I wasn't stirring it or something so that is what is shown in the first tab the second tab in this Excel file, the tab labeled zero bias with precision up to 40%, has similar data where we've got data in the A column being date and that is plotted along the X axis. And then we've got column B containing the data from thermometer A, column C containing the data from thermometer B, and those are plotted with their corresponding colors on this chart. Now this chart looks a little different because you can see that there's some up and down with sometimes thermometer A being higher than thermometer B and sometimes the reverse. Thermometer B is higher than thermometer A. So again if you put your cursor over a point it will tell you which point you're looking at. So looking at the second point here we've got thermometer A reading 4 degrees Celsius and thermometer B reading 5 degrees Celsius. So at this point thermometer B is higher and that continues in the next point but then they switch with thermometer A being higher and it continues on where they're both basically wiggling around the same line with sometimes one is higher than the other and sometimes the other is higher than the first. This is an indicator of precision error. So if you wanted to try to quantify this error at this point, once you're confident and you've gathered some time period of data or you just put your, for example, temperature probes together and collect some data to look at it, you could see then if you do the calculations in column E where, again, if we click in that cell, the arguments that go into that formula are shown in color and you can see that the relative percent difference I've already formatted to show in percent. 
And so depending upon which probe is higher than the other, you're going to have a relative percent difference that's sometimes positive and sometimes negative. That's an indicator because sometimes you've got thermometer A higher than thermometer B and vice versa. So obviously your relative percent difference is going to show sometimes positive and sometimes negative. One of the things that you need to do in terms of your QC checks is make sure your results are less than a particular limit. And sometimes that limit might be two degrees, so it might be an, an absolute number of degrees that your two temperature probes can be different from one another by, and sometimes that's a value of percent. In general, what you look for is having your QC results meet a certain standard for how well your device needs or your devices need to perform. So you would plot a plot like this, which is a control chart, and the idea is to make sure that your relative percent difference is less than a certain percentage, for example, and you could easily scan down and see when your relative percent difference is greater than a certain amount. It could be that this is fine. It could be that your two temperature probes only need to be within plus or minus 50% of one another. It depends on what your project is, and that will be written up in your QAPP, and probably in section 14 you'll have a table called measurement quality objectives for how well your equipment needs to perform. The third sheet, labeled bias of about 20%, shows similar data with date and the two temperature probe results in two columns, then the average, then the relative percent difference in percent. But if you look at the graph, and you always have to graph your data, it's really so much easier to see what's going on when you produce a graph than if you just look down a row of numbers. So looking at this, you see a consistent difference between the two probes. You see, in fact, a bias. In general, we've got the blue line is higher than the red line, meaning that temperature probe B is always measuring the water to be a little bit hotter than temperature probe A is saying it is. So when you see your data in graph form like this, you can see really right away that there's a bias. In a case such as this, then it makes sense to calculate an average of the relative percent differences. And if you look at the values, you can see that they're mostly negative, except for one where they measure the same, which is this point right here, meaning that there's a systematic, consistent difference. And remember, bias is the jump in one direction or in another direction consistently. So in this case, we see evidence of bias, and it makes sense in this case to calculate average statistics for, for example, the average of relative percent difference. So if you click in this cell G10, that's just calculating the average of the relative percent differences that you've calculated so far. And this is an example of bias. So there you have it. Download these Excel files, replace these values with your results, play around with the graphs, Again, I always recommend using XY scatter charts. That way, if there's a gap in date or time in your data, it will show up appropriately in your graph. Thanks for watching.